Hey everyone, it's Katie from Bobby Hair Studio. Today I'm going to show you how I turn this client's natural level 7 to 8 roots into a black box dye concoction into something more natural so that we can make her blonde eventually. And uh, this is what she started with. And this is what we got her to in one session. It was about five, five and a half hours. I know it was a little bit of banding, but she had so many levels of box dye in her hair. When I first did her test strand in October of last year, I asked her what was in her hair and she literally told me, oh my God, everything. So there's so many layers of box dye. So to make our job easier, I asked her how much she's willing to cut off and she said she's fine to go to the collarbone. So I've cut off a little bit longer than the collarbone. So I have a little bit of room here to adjust upwards uh, when the hair is wet. But this is just to kind of get rid of that extra bulk so we don't spend time coloring that. Now to keep her and the cape clean, I'm putting a Framar back bib around her so that I can work fast and messy because this kind of color correction means that you have to work very quickly and saturate very well. What we're trying to do here first is use a color remover. This is by Schwarzkopf. It is the bond building color remover. You can actually see some of the tape residue that's left in her hair. She had tape ins and she took them out herself, but she left in like a ton of those tapes. So it's something that I have to kind of work around and then detangle from her hair later. But right now, those are the little pieces of plastic that you see in her hair. They're just tape. I'm trying to lift out as much of the black box dye as possible using the Schwarzkopf Bond Building Color Remover and I've mixed it with 20 volume. On the package it says to use 6 or 10 volume but with something with this many layers of box dye I like to use something a little bit higher because we're probably going to be bleaching afterwards anyways. This is also one of those services where I don't know where each step will take us. We just kind of have to do one step at a time, reevaluate the hair and kind of work from there. So my client knows that she's not going blonde blonde today. She knows that. But what we're trying to get is something that can blend in with her natural pretty well until her next upcoming service where we do some highlights in her hair. And then we can kind of blend those highlights into her old color, maybe even lift her previous color a little bit more and then hopefully she can be blonde. I'm working as quickly as I can and I am using gloves because I find that that is the faster way for me to apply this and I get to feel the saturation of the hair rather than putting this in foils. And then once I'm done applying this, I'm going to cover her up with the rest of the back bib and just keep it really insulated and really warm. Also don't worry if you're going beyond the area of the box dye onto her virgin hair with the kind of lightener based color remover because even though it will lift some of that color, you're going to see what it does to the black box dye. And here she is, I'm just pulling off the, uh, the plastic and you know that gave her a lot of good insulation. Here is what the color remover has done so far, which is an incredible job. It has lifted that black up to like a ready auburn color, which is absolutely incredible. You can see where her natural is because it's lifted to kind of like a yellowy orange, but this is a great lift so far. It gives me a lot of opportunities to lighten her in the future. Her hair feels great, feels very healthy. And uh, I can, I really have a lot of options here for my next piece. However, when you do lift box dye out with color remover, keep in mind that not every result is going to be the same. In fact, most people are going to get different results. And she has different colors all over her hair. Like you're going to see here, the pieces aren't quite as light lifted because she applied her box dye more in the front and it left on, she left it on longer and she probably box dyed a little bit more often in the front than she did in the back. Here I'm rewrapping her and I'm just applying a little bit of heat for her last five to ten minutes just to try to get a little bit more out. Now that she's been washed out you can see the unevenness and patchiness that a box dye gave her. Here is from where she had old box dye and then that little yellow band there is her natural virgin color which actually isn't too much of a problem for us. Now what I'm doing is I'm foiling her hair and I'm trying to cover basically everything that had box dye in it. So all of that kind of red orangey area. I'm foiling as fast as possible just by taking thin sections, super saturating them and leaving the foils unfolded. This just speeds me up. I'm applying with a Framar Power Painter brush because this is just the fastest possible way you can do this. And the reason why you want to be fast is so that everything lifts up as even as possible, especially if you don't have time on your side and you want to make a color correction as 
affordable for your client as possible, you want to work quickly and you want to do the job as well as you can at the same time. So yeah, her formula here is Blonde Me and 20 volume here. And her hair felt really good after the color remover, so I felt like it was totally safe to bleach her in one day after a color remover. Now she's been sitting insulated for a little while. She had a little bit of heat added onto there, and we're gonna see what she lifted to with a little bit of bleach. She's still got a lot of orange in her hair, but she's lifted so much, she lifted so well. And this is a really great result after having so much box dye in her hair. We're able to tone her to a color that's a lot more like her natural so that she can at least hold on for a month or two in between appointments. It's always important to keep your expectation really realistic for a color correction, especially one that involves a lot of box dye, because not everyone's results are gonna be as light as this. This is actually a very surprising result. Her hair still feels good, and she's lifted this light after so many sessions of box dye. Please don't expect this to happen for every single color correction that you do, or if you're a client, please don't expect this for your color correction. The the harsh chemicals that are in box dyes all vary on everybody's hair and the kind of chemicals that stylists use have different varying results as well. So please keep that in mind. Don't keep this as your expectation level and please understand that it's not always possible to go from black to blonde in one day. Now I'm going to be washing her out and you guys can see how light she lifted with all of her foils. And again, unfortunately we did run out of time today, but if we had a few more hours, I would have actually just foiled up her top before toning her down. And I would have tried to blend in her foils as much as possible and tone her to like maybe like a level eight or, or even highlight her roots with like a 20 volume and then go with a seven volume over the ends just to bump it up another level and tone her all over with an eight to a nine. That would have been really pretty. However, we ran out of time today. So we'll be doing that next time. I'm also going to be shampooing her with some no orange shampoo by Fanola. And what this is gonna do is kind of help to cut the brass before I tone. So this is a great pre-tone method. Always you know, apply it really generously and let it sit in the hair for about five minutes so it helps to kind of cut those hard orange tones. So now here comes the part where I'm toning my client and uh, I actually have two different types of toner I'm using. The first toner is by Schwarzkopf, it's called TBH, True Beautiful Honest. And what I like about this toner is that it kind of fills out the canvas and balances everything. So the color that I'm using for her mids to ends, just anything that's been bleached, uh, is TBH 8-19 and uh, 7 volume. And then what I ended up doing, I actually didn't end up catching this on my camera, was in the sink after I rinsed out her toner, I dropped down a root smudge. And that root smudge was with Schwarzkopf Vibrance, and it was 6-16, 9-4, and 8-11. Um, I don't have the actual measurements. Everyone's hair is going to be a little bit different. And that's oftentimes why I don't put out full measurements. Um, usually what I'll put out is like the first number that I put out is the number that I use the most of and anything after that I use less and less of each one and the reason why I do this is because not everybody's hair is going to be the same when you tone it she's going to have different results than it would be on someone who had virgin hair versus someone who maybe lifted a little more warm with each of these toners I let them process for the full time that it says on the label and then I washed her out and blow dried her and uh, here is her result. So I feel like in one session this is a really really good result. Her hair is super shiny, it still feels very healthy. I know there's banding in her hair. You don't have to tell me that twice, I already know that it's there. You can see it, I can see it, so can the client. But I feel like having a realistic expectation for a color correction is super important because when there's so many levels of box dye in the hair, there's going to be banding. But our overall goal was achieved today. Let's get her lighter and more blended with her natural color so that we can grow it out and work on it. And here's her old color compared to her new color today. Remember to like and subscribe.